It is flexing hardcore with all the tires on the ground. Understand you soon, it won't be long. Keep on, keep on It's your boy Ryvie here, back with another video on this Axial SCX-10 II. And today in this video, as you guys can tell by not only the thumbnail, but also the title. And obviously what it looks like right now. I did some modifications, we got the bigger tires back on there. And, um... I don't know if that's probably what you guys can want to see uh, right now. But, we're going to get right into it. All right, guys, so we are back from the intro, and uh, let's go ahead and get started with this uh, this this awesome freaking beast. So I put the bigger tires on here. Um, to be honest, I don't even know what size these tires are. I want to say they're probably 2.2s, um, just because of how big they are. And I wanted to just kind of get you guys into what uh, I've been doing the whole time and why I haven't been making videos. Uh, I don't have pictures of how many pieces this was in, but uh, I wish I did. This thing was literally into pieces. I mean, it was just like, it was just in pieces. So I'll go ahead and get into uh, all what all I did and what I was doing and what I'm still trying to figure out and uh, adjust and whatnot. But um, yeah, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and show you guys um, the droop, we can say. So whenever I lift at the back, there's not going to be that much droop. Literally how it looks right now, that's about as much droop as I got. Um, because of the way that the shocks are, that I set them up to be as. So whenever I lift up the uh, the front, this is where it has the, uh, the most droop. As you guys can see there, it's got way more droop than the back. And if we pick it up fully, you can see how much the difference is there um and whatnot so the reason why i have the, the front to do more droop than the rear is because i felt like the front is the thing that you mostly sleep mostly see flex the most than the rear um i could set this up the same way that this is set up just by adjusting how the shocks are or by getting uh, longer shocks, which I'm also probably gonna try as well. But the other thing um, about having that much droop is I'm gonna have to get some custom uh, axle, or not axle, custom um, drive shafts. And because if I lift, if I do what's over here, this axle, I mean, this drive shaft, sorry, likes to pop out. And so it, it just, it kind of messes with it. And then it's only front wheel drive. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, well, so we'll go ahead and turn this around as you see my mirrors all messed up, but uh, we'll go ahead and turn it around and I'll show you what the front looks like and whatnot. So this is what it looks like in the front. Um, you have the, the crappy tint job I did with some actual car tint left over from my, um, one of my cars. And so, yeah, as you guys can see, I did get some new axles. Um, these are China made. And it was like a hundred bucks for the front and rear, I think. But um, it's not too bad. I've, I've heard mixed reviews on them saying that they broke with like within the first use, three times later after taking it on a trail. But I kind of was just wondering like, okay, first off, like what are they doing for these to break? Being all aluminum and whatnot. They were saying the internals is what usually goes out on these. But, you know, I don't really know. So we're going to see. We're going to give them a try. And if not, I do have the regular axles. I'm pretty sure they were saying that the regular axial insides of the axles will fit directly into here. So you can just rebuild it with OEM shit, uh, basically. And then have the outside look um, more beefier and custom. Another thing, um, you might be wondering why, since this is the SCX-10 II, the swervo is normally chassis mounted um, and I put it back down to the axle um, as my hand was in the way. Instead of having the SCX-10 II where it's like the uh, the pan hard bar and then the swervo linkage that all goes to right here for it to turn, um, I actually just decided to go with a uh, axle mounted one because of how how much this lifts 
it's it's hard to get the geometry right um, and whatnot, especially with it to be able to to flex how much I want it to flex. So it, it just it all came down to what I want wanted this thing to do uh, for me. I mean, I don't really go out on the trail a lot. I just like to mess around with RCs and see what I can do with it and just have a little bit of backyard fun basically. You might be wondering why this is lifted up more above the body is lifted up from like here. Normally this would be down a little bit more. It's on the max body lift um, that you could do stock wise. That way it has extra room to clear the extra, um, extra movement here. And so the other thing is that I need to adjust and cut some of the body still. I'll still have to get rid of some of this and also take off some of the, the bumper because these corners right here, they like to rub the hell out of, out of these tires. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is. So I'll have to do some trimming on it. I never really do much in the back, but it is lifted also over here. So it looks retarded because you can see that it just doesn't look legit. But this whole, this whole thing, this isn't legit at all anyway, like scale wise. I mean, look at this. I'm going to bring in close here. So we'll put you to the rear. As you guys can see, the shocks, they don't go from here up and down. They go from here and then they go up to here. And you might be wondering how the heck am I doing that? And I'll show you guys what it looks like from uh, in, inside. You might, if you're coming from last video, you already know what it looks like but I did adjust the way that the shocks are um, from the front and the rear. So that it's different setup from the front than it is the rear. Uh, so then we'll go to the front. Like this looks like, okay, it's not as bad, but if you go to the front, this is where it kind of gets real unlegit. As you guys can see, normally it would go up to here, straight down. These are going here, like at a freaking, I don't even know what angle that is. Yeah, and then whenever you lift it up, you can see the shocks better. But yeah, so this is the, that's how I'm able to get the amount of flex and stability that this thing uh, has. So we'll go ahead and take off the, the clips and I'll go ahead and take off the body. These do have LEDs in them, but I don't have them hooked up so I can just pull it off. Uh, normally, as you guys can see, they would be plugged in, but I have them all tucked away just cause I don't run them uh, during the day. And like I said, I don't really go to the track that much to test this thing out as much as I would like, but you know, it's whatever. I like to do this just for fun. And as a small hobby I have, I'm not like true intricate into it, if that's even the right wording. But uh, yeah, so basically this is a Frankenstein put together Jeep. Um, this is from the Axial, not the Axial, this is from the Exceed Max Stone 10. So yeah, this is this is from like a different RC truck, um, rock color really, and so are the shocks, and so are some of the um, uh, the linkages, and the tires are also from the Axial S on the freaking Maxstone Exceed Maxstone Ten, um, and so is the I don't know what that thing is called. I forget what that thing's called, but this guy right here, this channel receiver. Um, this is also from the Axial, or the Exceed Max Stone 10. So I did this because like I was able to just swap that out and use the uh, the remote that the um, Exceed Max Stone 10 came with. And the reason why I wanted to use that remote is because it has the option to um, to like tune turn down the power. Uh, and it like just limits the amount of power that you have full throttle wise. So you can adjust it full throttle. You can have it set to in the middle. That'll give you about half throttle, even though on the trigger it's full throttle. Um, you can turn it down even more to where full throttle is like 25% or you could just turn it up all the way and have it where it's just normal um, trigger operation. So it like, it just depends on how much you pull it. So I like to have that option to control it. That way it just gives it more of a, control over the speed and torque of this thing. And um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much really uh, it. Another thing that I had to do, we'll go ahead and turn the truck this way, just so you guys can see it better. I had to cut out um, 
part of this. This was also from the Exceed Maximum 10. This top part I had to cut a little bit of it out. That way it'd be able to bend a little bit so I could get the LiPo battery in. Um, I am running a Alvonic 2 cell, I believe it is. Um, yeah, I think it's 2 cell. Uh, I can't remember what it is. I got it a while ago. Um, but it is a 2 cell, I believe. We're going to go ahead. Next video, I'll post showing what this thing can do. Hopefully, it does live up to its name being fucking Frankenstein. I'm just going to be calling it that because literally, you got axial parts. You got other parts off of your freaking other RC. The Swervo is even off of the Exceed Max Zone 10. Okay, so the transmission, you're probably wondering in the motor, that's is whatever came when i bought this off ebay when i bought this truck on ebay it was literally i'll show you a picture bone stock nothing really was done to it uh except for like a minor things this metal plate was here uh and then it had like the other one that goes right here and then the axle ones but i upgraded the axles i upgraded some of the the linkages this thing was really a cheap put together because i had all the parts already the only thing that sucks is the front of this as i put you guys too close again the front of this these the way that this is set up i need a little bit thicker oil in these um because it likes to sink down all the way and hit the swervo and then i don't know if that's gonna limit anything probably not we'll see how it does the only thing i'm complaining about is right here i don't know if you guys can see that i'm going to take you off of my janky freaking tripod that i have rigged up here um Right in here, as you guys can see, it likes to rub the crap out of the wheels. So I'm going to have to like shave a bunch of this down or take these apart off of the axle and then just kind of grind down a little bit right there to fit these bigger tires. Because um, I moved it in, they were set up to this hole right here and I moved them in thinking that would be better. Um, it did do a little bit better, but now the wheels aren't like, they don't, I don't know if you can see that, it's not lined up with the back like it's it's towed in a little bit so this wheel instead of being straight is towed in a little bit um i think that'd be towed in because towed out would be the other way i believe but yeah so it's towed in on both sides but i, I mean you know like i said and i did have to leave these a little bit loose to be able to have it roll and move because if i tighten the the lugs on it or lug whatever you want to call those um all the way then it, it hits too much against this so that could also you know break these probably because i'm not running it right and tight enough like it should be um but we'll see how it goes like i said i'm not like an your average joe who goes out all day every day to or every weekend or whatever they do to go you know scaling and whatnot i'm just your do-it-yourself backyard person who just likes to fuck around with RCs and, you know, see what the hell we can do, basically. Um, I'm more of a car guy, but this is like my, I'm bored, and especially with the pandemic going around, you know, COVID-19, this is like my, my getaway thing. I've just been going at this and seeing what I could do with it, and it's just a way to time, to pass time. So yeah, that's basically what I did with it, guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Um, that's going to be it for today. I'm pretty sure I didn't leave anything else out, but I'll let you guys know for sure um, if I did or not. But uh, let's just get one last good glimpse at this thing. And I'll go ahead and show you guys, which will be, as you guys saw in the thumbnail, uh, probably if I decide to do that, the uh, flex that this thing can do now. Alrighty guys, so we are back. As you guys can see, it is flexing hardcore with all the tires on the ground, Ex well, except for that one obviously, but all the tires are supported and the whole body of it is supported. So I'll go ahead and take you hands free now, as you guys can see, I'm just using a janky fucking microphone holder as my tripod. But um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Um, you have literally the whole thing Flex and hardcore, tucking even a little bit over here, and it just looks amazing. And then, as you guys can tell, like I was saying before, it does hit right there, so I gotta trim some of that out. Um, but it just it looks so good, I think. Even it being non-scale wise looks, but um, yeah. 
So I'll go ahead and put you back on the tripod over here, my JQ1, and then I'll go ahead and show you and measure the the size of this. So we'll see really how much this thing can, can flex. So to measure this, the tires are about, I would say, just above six and a half. So probably like six and five eighths. And uh, it can basically flex about that much, I guess you could say. Almost, almost seven inches. So I would say that that's pretty good. Um, it could go even more if I had smaller tires on it. It'd be able to flex even more, but I like I like the bigger tires. It just it brings out the the jeepness in it because of how big they are. So the other thing that I'm trying to fix on this is how the body rolls. Like you push it this way, it doesn't want to move back. You push it this way, it doesn't want to move back. It just it has a lot of body roll to it. So I'm trying to figure that out. Like I said, probably put some thicker oil in the shocks. And hopefully that will like help stiffen it up because if I put the shock straight up and down, normally it's real stiff. Um, but how they're set up right now, it just is like wee. So um, yeah, it's crazy. Like from stock to now, I'll even show you guys a picture. Um, what it looked like before, like I said, and I think in the video. But um, these were the ones that I was going to use. They came with the truck when I bought it their bf goodrich's all-terrain and yeah so compare these to the big jeep ones that i have on them now and you guys can just see the difference between how how much thicker these are compared to these that's that we'll see you guys in the next one peace hey hey it's me again you should like that video there on the bottom and hit that subscribe button right next to it. Oh, you see that video there on the screen? You should go watch that one too.